Hello and welcome, and welcome back. This is the Sphere Pedagogical Training 2.0. This is the introductory video. The assumption here is that you have all had the Pedagogical Training 1.0 from the Sphere project, and we're going to expand upon a lot of the concepts that we, we talked about there. Uh, again, my name is Walt Hurley. I'm a professor emeritus at the University of Illinois. My home department is the Department of Animal Sciences. I've taught uh, students, particularly undergraduates or students in a four-year that four-year program for over 35 years. Uh, in the last uh, 12 or 15 years, I've also been involved in, in providing um, workshops that relate to teaching. So some of the concepts we talked about in the 1.0, some of the concepts we're going to talk about in this Pedagogical Training 2.0. My colleague, Chilan Bolin, you'll also see in some of these videos, uh, she's a senior specialist in education. Uh, she's in the Center for Innovation in Teaching and Learning at the University of Illinois on our campus. Again, this is a group that provides a tremendous support ac across campus for all sorts of things related to teaching and learning. Uh, some of the, the, the people doing the videos, for example, again, are part of this, this group. Chilan, especially, though, is working directly with faculty to help them enhance their teaching. So she does this through a variety of kinds of workshops with faculty where she gets them engaged, she gets them literally working on things, as you'll, you'll find out in some of the videos, because she will have you working as well. Uh, and then she also works individually with faculty to help them enhance their, their teaching skills, their, their pedago pedagogy. Uh, this is just to remind you that we both have a little bit of experience in, in Sierra Leone. This is Chilan at uh, Nijala University working with a group of faculty uh, a few years ago. Uh, she managed to come over once. I've managed to come over, go, come over several times, about three times. This is, I think, me working with, uh, again, a, a workshop there in Freetown, uh, working with some of the faculty there in a workshop. Uh, this will be, there will be a, a different look and feel for our videos, mine versus Chilon. Again, I'm moving around. You can see me. I'm moving my hands around, pointing at things. She's going to be in this environment where she's kind of sitting in the corner talking to her. You can see her talking and moving around, but her content's going to be up on, on the big screen up above her. So a little bit of a difference in the way we've produced these videos. Uh, to remind you, Illinois, this is where we're coming from. The, the red state outline there is Illinois, and the little dot there is, is indicating roughly where Champaign-Urbana is, where we're, we're standing making these videos. Again, we're a little bit over 5,000 miles from Freetown, just to give you an idea of how far away we are from you. At the beginning of the Sphere project, uh, one of the things that they did was to take a survey of, of employers as well as, as faculty, and, faculty and, and university administrators and so on, and trying to identify where are some gaps. So the students come out with, with certain uh, skills, certain uh, uh, technical skills and knowledge, but then uh, the, the people hiring those students identified a whole range of kinds of gaps in their, in their skill development. So we call these the skills gap. So the, the things like writing, speaking English, teamwork, working independently, critical thinking, et cetera, et cetera. And we've called those skills gaps, but a lot of times people will call these kinds of things career readiness competencies or professional competencies. They're very important for all students, not just to get a job, keep that job, to progress in that job, and to be productive in, in whoever the, uh, the company is, the employer, for the employers that, that are hiring them. Uh, to remind you that, that you're not alone in this, every year this group in the United States National Association of Colleges and Employers uh, does a survey of employers, and this is, this is uh, from 2018, but, but it really doesn't change that much. The results don't change that much from year to year. Employers rate the essential need of the career readiness competencies. These are the ones that are really, really highly rated, critical thinking, problem solving, teamwork, collaboration, professional and work ethic, oral and written communication, leadership, digital technology, career management, global and multicultural fluency, and many of these things, particularly these up here, uh, directly align with the skills gaps that, that the people in Sierra Leone have identified that, that your students have. So we, we struggle with the same kinds of things, and, and it's certainly a challenge to all of us, and we work really hard to try to help our students develop these skills uh, while they're learning all that technical content. Which brings us to this idea, that you have your content for your module, 
We put a lot of work into delivering that, to developing that, to, to organizing it. And here we're coming along saying, well, we also need to make sure that those students develop those professional competencies and don't think of these as separate things. We need to think of these as one and the same. So how are they learning your content? They're doing things, practicing those professional skills based upon your content. So again, these, these things are, are one and the same and how we should be thinking about pulling these together. Um, in the Pedagogy of Training 1.0, we talked about student-centered learning. Another term is learner-centered learning. We, I think we're just using for, for sake of, of simplicity. This one here is student-centered learning. And the idea that we have a spectrum, a continuum basically from strictly teacher-centered learning, think lecture. This is exactly what I'm doing to you right now. I'm talking at you, I'm delivering knowledge, giving you content. Uh, on this end of the spectrum, though, student-centered learning, students are active, they're actively engaged in things, they're practicing those skills, they're talking, they're doing, working on projects, et cetera, et cetera. Our goal in these training uh, modules is to get you to go wherever you are on the spectrum to get you to keep moving in this direction and, and thinking about that and how to do that and, and keep moving in this direction and, and maybe getting away a little bit from strictly, strictly lecture. Our role changes as we go along this spectrum. Over here, we are the purveyor of knowledge. We're the sage on the stage, as some people call it. I'm just like talking at you, lecturing. On this end of the spectrum, though, our role as the instructor changes. Now, instead of just only lecturing, we may still do some of that, but we're also working with the students. We're partnering with the students in their learning process. We're a facilitator of the student learning, a partner in the learning process. And regardless of where you are on this spectrum, we're creating a learning environment for those students. So would we rather have students over here where they're just sitting passively, taking, hopefully taking some notes, uh, as you may be writing down now, listening to me? Maybe yes, maybe no. Or would you rather have the students uh, engaging in that content, really getting their teeth into that content and, and learning it? As we move along this spectrum, then, one of the things that it does require of all of us is it requires a shift in our mindset, a shift in the way we think about teaching, about learning, about our students, about ourselves as teachers. Uh, it, again, it, it requires us to think differently about all these things. Okay, in this video series, this is a, kind of the, the outline of the sections of the video series, the introduction, which I'm doing now, we're gonna spend a little bit of time reviewing Pedagogical Training 1.0 because a lot of these other topics are built on top of that, those topics that we talked about in the 1.0. So I wanted to spend some time reminding you of, of that because it may have been a while since you, you participated in those earlier workshops. Uh, we're gonna expand upon the idea of learning, about what it is and how to think about learning. Uh, we're gonna talk about active learning, engaging students through active learning. So getting them actively doing things in the classroom. Uh, Shilan will give you a lot of ideas on that. She'll also give you a lot of, a lot of ideas on leading effective discussions. Um, I will tell you, I'm not really very good at doing that in my, my classes, in, in, in my modules. Uh, Shilan is very good at it. So she will give you some direct ideas on how to, to be a better at doing that, of leading those effective discussions in your classroom. Uh, we'll spend a lot of time on students learning collaboratively in groups and teams and give you lots and lots of ideas on how to think about that, how to develop those projects, uh, how to develop groups and get groups to be effective in uh, learning effectively by doing those kinds of projects. Uh, and then we'll have a review and wrap up. Our learning objectives at the end of this training, you will, you will be able to apply the significant learning model in your classes. So we're, again, I talked about expanding how we think about learning. Here's another taxonomy, another way of thinking about learning. Where you'll be able to apply those ideas to your classes, uh, your modules. Understand uh, your students as individual learners with diverse learning styles. We're gonna introduce you to the, just briefly to the idea of learning styles, that we all learn a little bit differently. And if we understand that concept, uh, it will help us as, as teachers. Uh, you will be able to apply the concepts of active learning to your classrooms. How do I get my students to, to actively engage in, in, in something in my classroom? Again, how do I get my students, or how do I uh, become more effective in leading discussions in my classrooms? Uh, um, how do I develop 
collaborative assignments for your students, or how do you develop collaborative assignments for your students. And then uh, you will be able to lead uh, effective groups and team activities in your classrooms. And that's, that's a really important one. To remind you, there's a little vocabulary thing that sometimes both Chilan and I will slip up on potentially. In the US, we talk about a degree program as a course, you call it a course of study. So those four years, all the different modules in those four years are the course of study. We use this word right here, course, as one of those, what you call modules. So a course to me, my, my course in lactation biology. In your terminology, that will be my module in, in lactation biology. It's one course out of many that are in the, the animal sciences degree program. In all cases, all cases, what we're talking about is your 15 weeks with your students or your 12 weeks or whatever it is during that semester working directly with your students. So once in a while, you may find that Chilan and I mess up and we use this word, but in all cases, we're talking about your module, at your level of your module, your 15 weeks with your students. We have a lot to get uh, cover in this, to go over, to share concepts and so on. So let's get started. <laughs>